Glory, hallelujah. What a privilege we all have. We're looking at the theme, I recover all. And that presupposes that something was lost. Something is missing. Something used to be there and it's no longer there. In the four quadrants of your life, whatever you have missed or you are missing, this conference is to let you know that God has a plan. You are going to recover everything. As the Lord God of Israel liveth, you will recover everything. Your health, your vocation, your marriage, relationship, or you are even a single person, it doesn't matter. You will recover whatever you have lost. As the Lord God of Israel liveth in the name of Jesus. Or is it finance or your academics? Or is it about your career? Or your vocation or ministry. What is it? Get ready because God is set and we are ready to be blessed. My foundational scripture is the book of Ruth, chapter number one. It's a very popular story. It's one of my favorite passages. And I preach a lot from this passage. Now it came to pass, verse one. Ruth, chapter number one, from verse one. In the days when the judges ruled, who is ruling your life? Because the person that rules your life will determine what you will get. In the days when judges ruled, judges, who is judging you, by the way? Who is condemning you? Who is using your past to determine your future? Who is reminding you of who you used to be that you want to forget? Do not allow them to rule because they only bring farming. But you are here to recover whatever has been lost. Going forward, dislodge the judges. The judge may be yourself, condemning yourself, not forgiving yourself. It can be the voices of your past, mistakes, the voices of past relationships, the voices of critics. Do not allow them to judge you. I just need to pause there as we go on with this scripture. When judges ruled, there was a famine. That's what happens. Famine of joy, famine of bread, famine of peace, famine of love. There, there is always famine when you hand over the driver's seat of your life to another person. And this is the starting point. This is what makes people to lose. But today we're recovering in the name of Jesus. And a certain man of Bethlehem, Judah, went to sojourn in the country of Moab, he and his wife and his two sons. And the name of the man was Elimelech, and the name of his wife Naomi, and the name of his two sons Malon and Chilion, Ephrathites of Bethlehem, Judah. And they came into the country of Moab and continued there. This is a very interesting story, very, very interesting story. Elimelech means, my God is king. Bethlehem Judah means the house of bread. Now, when you say a place is a house of bread, you're supposed to have bread there every time. That's, but this looks like a paradox to me. Bethlehem Judah, house of bread. And there is scarcity. There is famine. There is no bread. Sometimes bad things happen to good people. Sometimes in life, two plus two may not be equal to four. But let me tell you this. What you're going through now is only a dark chapter in the book of your life. It is not the entire book. Stop smelling bread, the aroma of bread from Moab. Moab is a cursed land. Stay in Bethlehem, Judah. Contradictions can never Cancel the covenant. What you are going through now is not the end of the story. What people are saying about you may be the fact, but it is not the truth. Facts change. Truth doesn't. Jesus says in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, not the fact, and the life. Truth is not always in the appearance of things. When you plant corn or you plant maize, it will take some time. It's the law. So don't, because of temporary situations that you are going through, take permanent decisions. 
Elimelech, my God is king. For God, the meaning of his name. For God, that that's supposed to be a prophetic name. For God, the name of the place where he was living. A place of covenant. The land that the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of Israel, gave to his people as an inheritance. He forgot. Contradictions made him forget the covenant. He smelled the aroma of bread because he felt Bethlehem Judah had famine. And he took his wife and took his sons, took his own life, and they left for a land that God cursed. It's so amazing and so interesting that sometimes this is the pictorial image of our lives. We often forget that God comes late when he wants to come big. We always forget that when your neighbor is testifying of God's goodness in his or her life, it is a sign that God is in your neighborhood. God comes late when he wants to come big. He's coming. Stop traveling to Moab. Stop going back to relationships that abuse you. Stop going back to relationships that make you feel small. Stop going back to what God has nothing to do with. Stop trying to resurrect what God is trying to kill. Stay in Bethlehem, Judah. That is a place of recovery. That is the place of amazement. That is the place of promotion. That is the place of going forward. I will recover all. I must recover all. I shall recover all. As we look at this story, let's see how Naomi recovered all. And this God is a God of too much. Three much. Ten much. One million much. Because when God decides to make you recover all, he doesn't just give you what you lost. He gives you more than that. What does it even mean to recover? It means to return to normal, to regain possession. You're not returning to normal. You're returning to abnormal. Yes, the supernatural. What is not common sense? What is not logical? That's what God is going to do for us in this conference. To recoup, to take back, to retrieve, to reclaim. And that's what we're saying. Look at this scripture. Every woman, please, always remember if you are married, pray for your husband. Because when a man misses it, it doesn't only affect him, it affects everything about him. His wife, his children, his business, everything about him. When a man takes his place, his wife falls into place. It's important for you to pray cover your husband. And husbands, please, listen to your wives. Listen. That woman is not a dummy of sins. God blessed you with that gift. Treasure her. A lot of men, married men today, have missed God, have missed it in certain areas of their lives because they didn't listen. Every woman is blessed with the power of intuition, particularly. When your wife tells you, look, I don't like the way I'm feeling about this thing, you better listen. Listen very well. Look at the names they even gave their children. What? Marlon and Chilion. Meaning sickly and wasting away. Maybe those children were always sick. Who knows? Will you please remember that the name you call whatever you own is prophetic. What do you call your marriage? What do you call your business? What do you call your children? What do you call your husband? What do you call yourself? Look at me. I've lost everything. Stop it. Look at me. See my head. See my eyes. Stop it. I'm not beautiful. I'm too fat. I'm too toughing. Stop it. Stop it. God did not make or create a nobody. You may not be where you want to be yet, but you are not where you used to be. Give thanks to the Lord. You are beautiful. 
You are amazing. You are brilliant. You are altogether lovely. Psalm 139 and verse number 14. I love the message translation. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. What a creation. That's what message translation says. Psalm 139 verse 14. What a creation. What a beauty to behold. It doesn't matter what anybody feels about you. Job chapter number 12 and verse 3. And Job chapter 13 verse 2. What you know, I know. I am not inferior to you. It's right there in the Bible. You are not inferior to anybody. You're not inferior to your twin sister. You're not inferior to your husband. You're not inferior to your pastor. You're not inferior to your friend. You're not inferior to your wife. No, you are not. You're not inferior to your parents. You are not inferior. Check it out. Job 12, 3 and Job 13, 2. It's there, right there for you and for me in the Bible. You are special. You are important. You are not the mistakes you made. That's why this conference is saying, I will recover all, not some, not a few, but all. Yes, I made the mistake. Yes, I lost, but I'm recovering all. Isn't God wonderful? Isn't God amazing? What do you call yourself? What name do you call your ministry? What name do you call your business? From today, rename. Start calling your marriage blessed. Start calling your husband darling. Start calling your wife beauty. Start calling the works of your hand blessed. That's what I do every morning. I bless my business. I bless the works of my hands. Standing upon Psalm 1 beginning from verse number 3. I'm blessed. In fact from verse number 1. I'm blessed. Blessed is the man that walketh not. So I make sure I don't walk. I don't sit. And I don't stand in the ways of sinners. Whatever I lay my hands on, prospers. And we see here that the children got married and they didn't have a child. They didn't have children. Huh. Elimelech died. His sons died. Maybe you're here and you don't have a child yet. I want you to know that weeping may endure for a night. Joy is coming in the morning. Your joy is coming. Please don't put your hand in sin or anything. You're going to recover. And you're recovering all. God is going to bless you with twins, with triplets, with boys, with girls, whatever you want. He's done it before. He's the situation controller. He will do it again. What are you going through? And it appears as if all is over. Can you imagine? Look at Naomi. Maybe when she left Bethlehem Judah with her husband, Everyone was envying her. Oh, she's relocating. Oh, she's relocating with her husband. And she was saying, yes, so we're going abroad. But she got there and see what happened. Flip it and look at Ruth. When she got married, maybe her friends and her colleagues were saying, oh, she's married to an expatriate. Oh, she'll be earning money now in dollars. But look at what happened. She didn't have a child and then her husband died. Maybe I'm describing you. I just want you to know that God is coming and is coming big. The Bible says, which is the starting point for, reco for recovery, the starting point for recovery, the starting point for recovery, that is it. The Bible says in verse 6, then she arose. After her husband died and the children died and she didn't have any grandchild, then she arose. If you're going to recover all, the starting point is your arising. In Luke chapter number one, Mary arose. You need to arise. You need to change company. You need to change relationships. You need to stand up, call yourself to a round table conference and say, up until now, enough is enough. I'm arising because I'm going to recover all. God has designed life in such a way that nobody can arise on your behalf. You have to arise by yourself. Arise in the name of Jesus and recover. She arose with her daughters-in-law to return from the country of Moab. For she had heard in the country of Moab how that the Lord had visited his people, giving them bread. You see, your sun will shine again. The dark clouds will fade. A new day will break. Just as God's promises said, there is a rainbow 
on the other side your victories at hand for i know your midnight is all most over your sun will shine again amen your sun will shine again naomi arose and then she says to her daughter's in-law god has visited the land of covenant every storm runs out of rain we now have the good news again i'm going back going back to god going back to god's place going back to the place of covenant and then she says to her daughters in law please return to your families i'm going back and the two of them began to cry they sympathized with her they had empathy and the Bible says that Opa kissed her and returned. But Ruth said, and I'm going to read that verse of the scripture, which is verse number 16. It's one of the most powerful verses in the Bible and in the story particularly. And Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave you or to return from following after you. For whither thou goest, I will go. And where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God, my God. Verse 17. Where you die, will I die, and there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me, and more also, if aught but death part you and me. My God. The Bible says, a faithful man shall abound in blessings. Look at this faithful woman. Look at her. She said, don't even try it. Maybe Upper even whispered to Ruth, you better let go. This woman killed her husband. She killed our husbands too, her sons. You better let go before she kills us. But Ruth said, no. I put on this spectacle of destiny. I see this woman beyond her circumstance. No, I refuse to let her situation define her. I'm going with her. She's my ladder to destiny. I'm following her. I want to pray for you today. In the name of Jesus, you will not miss the people you should meet. And you will not meet the people you should miss. It's a huge prayer. It's a massive prayer point. That God will guide your steps, guide your feet, so that you will not meet the people you should miss. And you will not miss the ones you should meet. Let your upper go. I'm so excited that upper left. You know why? There was only one Boaz in Bethlehem, Judah. Thank God that she left because she was a senior wife according to the arrangement of the name. Remember 1 Samuel chapter 1. Anna came before Penina. So the Bible is very detailed and particular about that. That was the arrangement. So she would have been the, the one to choose first. And there was only one Boaz, the right man, the correct man. Who is living your life? And then you think that's the end. No, that's not the end at all. At all, that's not the end. Let them go. Some people must not follow you to the next phase of your life. Let me remind you, stop trying to resurrect what God is trying to kill. Let them go. Let them go. God has a plan for you. Life is like an elevator. Some people must come in, some people must get up. Some people must come in, some people must get down. Let them go. Don't pull them back. Bye-bye to them. Yes. And then let me skip the other chapters and go to the last chapter. They got there. You know the story. And God connected Ruth through Naomi to Boaz. Thank God for mentors that are secure enough to let other, people's, other people shine. Don't follow a packed vehicle. She met Boaz and see what God did. Not only did she recover, she recovered all in multiple fold. Hear what the, the last verses of Ruth chapter number 4 from verse 13. So Boaz took Ruth and she was his wife. And when he went in unto her, 
the Lord gave her conception and she bore a son. I'm describing you. You are recovering. She didn't have a child. God gave her a child. Her husband died. God gave her a husband. Oh my God, this God. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Situation controller. Your name is Yahweh. That is God. This God. This kind of God. You see, opinion is the cheapest commodity on earth. Just base your life on people's opinions. That's the commonest thing. If their last name is not G-O-D, they don't have the final say over your life. Yes. God, G-O-D, grand overall designer, Baba God himself, gave her conception. And she bought a son. That's recovery. That is recovery. Taking back, recouping, reclaiming, getting back to more than normal. This is it. And this is what God is going to do for you in the name of Jesus. Whatever you have lost, you will not just have it back. You will have more than enough. Your cup will run over. You know why? So that you can be a blessing to other people. It's not enough for your cup to be full. It must run over. That running over is for the people. Look at what happened. She brought joy to everybody. Look at the scripture. Verse 14. And the women said unto Naomi. She brought joy to Naomi. She brought joy to the other women. Because God allowed her to recover all. As God is doing in this conference this year. And the women said unto Naomi. Blessed be the Lord. Which hath not left you this day without a kinsman. That his name may be famous in Israel. You see, God, if she had had a child through her former husband, <laughs> maybe there would be no fame. Who knows? You see, God, recovering all. Mm. And it shall be unto thee a restorer of your life. When you recover all, this is what happens. Restoration. First and foremost, gratitude. Blessed be the Lord. That's what will be coming out of your mouth. Thank you, Jesus. I'm so grateful. I give you thanks. When you start, but you know what I want you to do? Start rehearsing. How you will feel when you see the physical manifestation. Begin it now. Thank you, Lord, in advance. I magnify you. Be writer of history. Changer of destiny. Hey, the one that allows me to recover all. Begin to do that. As you do that, you are setting heaven up to work with speed on your behalf. Blessed be the Lord. He shall be unto you a restorer of your life. And a nourisher of your old age. This is it. When you recover all, oh, restoration comes. Nourishing comes. Of your old age, you live very long. For your daughter-in-law which loves you, which is better to you than seven sons, has born him. And Naomi, I love this. Ruth chapter 1 verse 16. Ruth said, don't leave me. Ruth chapter 4 verse 16. Naomi took the child. I love Jesus. Verse 16, Naomi took the child, laid it in her bosom, and became nurse to it. Recovery. She recovered all. And you are also recovering all in every aspect of your life today in the name of Jesus. Final verse that I'm reading. And the women, her neighbors, gave it a name saying, there is a son born to Naomi. What? Born to Naomi. And they called his name Obed. He's the father of Jason. The father of David. And from that genealogy comes the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh my God, Ruth and Naomi. Fantastic pictorial images of recovery. And the last time I checked, God has not retired. He doesn't retire. He cannot retire. He's the same yesterday and today and forever. He did it for these two ladies. You are the next. You are next in line for miracles, for restoration, for recovery. Go get your new garments. Go get your attires. Put on your dancing shoes because God is set and we are ready. He's ready to bless you in unusual ways, in unusual manners. I'm going to be praying with you very shortly. I just want to encourage you to get ready. Please get ready. Get ready. Compose songs. You're trusting God for the blessing of the womb. Write the names of, that you want to give to those children. You're believing God for your wedding. Come on, start rehearsing. 
Prayers how you will dance. Whatever you are trusting God for, I have come as a spiritual timekeeper to announce to you that it's time. Whatever you've lost, God is saying, I'm here not just to make you recover that, but to recover all. Begin to name it. Is it money? Wealth? Favor? Fame? Sound health? Wisdom? Excellence? Distinction? You are recovering all. God cannot lie. He's too faithful to fail. He's ready to do you good. He will be unusually kind to you. He will be magnanimous in his ways to you. Just like Ruth loved last. And Naomi, have you ever pictured it? That that same field, that same farm, where Ruth used to glean. You know what it means to glean? To pick whatever drops by chance. By chance. Her life, her means of survival was dependent on how kind the reapers were. If they choose not to drop anything, you know, because according to the book of Leviticus, the Bible says that they should remember widows and the orphans. If they choose not to drop, then she wouldn't have had anything. So that same farm, she became the wife of the owner. And if the two are one, according to Genesis chapter 2, <laughs> verse 24, if the two are one, then she owned the place. Amazing. So all the people that were, they were her bosses. She now became their boss. I'm describing somebody. Because you're recovering. You thought you lost the job. And God is saying, this is what I'm doing. I'm collapsing time for your sake. I'm restructuring. Those that used to treat you as if you are nobody. Now God is blessing you in such a way that he put you above them. Can you imagine that Ruth will go to the farm one day and she will be calling the people. Excuse me, how many tons of wheat do we have there? How many? Some of them had been working there for 30 years, for 15 years, for 10 years. And now, see God, God collapsed the time. That is recovery. I just want you to put yourself in this picture. And know that this is what the God of the Bible, the God that I know, the God that I serve, this is what he can do. And I'm joining my faith with you today to pray with you. In case you're here, you're not yet born again, please give your heart to Jesus. It's the greatest and the best thing that can ever, ever happen to you. And what a privilege I have to lead you to say these prayers. If you would just put your right hand on your chest and pray this prayer with me. Say, my Father and my God, I come to you today as a sinner. Please forgive me. Lord Jesus, come into my heart, be my Lord and my Savior. Today, I am saved. Today, I am born again. I thank you, Lord, for hearing my prayer and for saving me for I have prayed by faith in Jesus' name. Amen. If you pray that prayer genuinely, I want you to know that you are born again. You are now a child of God. And this is the starting point for your recovery in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm.